when we're talking about absolute value, I'm going to go back to our, our number line. And we use our number line in, to represent our solutions to an inequality. Now, when we're discussing absolute value, basically what we're discussing is distance, absolute distance. So if we have 0 here, I can go to the right and I can go to the left, right? Either way. So what, what basically, um, basically absolute value, again, is going to be dealing with what is actually the distance that is traveled? What is your absolute distance? So let's pretend you're at 0, right? If you travel three units to the right, how far did you actually travel? Three units, right? So we represent that with absolute value as the absolute value of 3. If you go from 0 to 3, the absolute distance that you traveled is equal to 3. Now, what about instead of going in the positive direction, let's say you go in the negative. And that's not negative 3. This is negative 3. Let's say you go ahead and go in the negative direction. Now, if you travel three units in the negative direction, how far did you how far did you travel? You still traveled three units. So we'd represent that with an absolute value as negative 3 is going to be equal to 3. OK? So the absolute value of a positive or a negative um, is always going to represent a positive solution. And this would be kind of just like some definitions um, in front. I didn't write that in there. So a couple things that I want you guys to understand. First of all, the absolute value symbols represent absolute distance. They do not represent grouping, grouping symbols. They are not like parentheses or brackets. Okay? They represent the absolute distance. Now, let's go and go through a fun little game. What if I said absolute value of 9 is equal to x? All right? What could the values, um, no, my bad, wrote it wrong. What if the absolute value of x is equal to 9? What could my values of x be for me to equal 9? Yes? Uh, negative 9 or 9. I could have an x equals 9, right? Because the absolute value of 9 we know is 9. And I could also have x is equal to a negative 9, right? Yeah. Does everybody agree? Yeah, yeah. So there's something very, very important I need you guys to make sure you have. And if you need to write it down, write it down. When we're looking for the absolute value, we're looking for two cases. When the quantity inside the absolute value is positive and when the quantity is negative. Right? So there's two cases, the positive and the negative of the quantity inside the absolute value. And then the last one we'll need to discuss before we get into a problem. What about the absolute value of a negative? Can we have the absolute value be negative? Well, think, yes. Right, exactly. You can go negative direction, right? You can go in, you can go in the positive direction. You can go in the, in the opposite direction, would be the negative direction. But you can't, you always go a positive distance. No matter what direction you go, you still went somewhere, right? So if you have any time you have an absolute value equal to a negative number, we can call that no solution. All right? So now, let's get into the fun stuff.